All right, so we've been doing a series called The Truth About. Everyone say, I'm a gate. I'm a gate. I need to open up. I'm a listener of the word. I need to pay attention and become a doer of it. So our scripture is this one here, uh, Psalms 24, 7 through 10. Now, remember I told you a couple of weeks ago that our eyes go to a gate, our ears go to a gate, our mouth, all the five physical senses go up and through a gate to a door. And it's up to us to either receive something or reject it. See, and so here God says concerning God, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be lifted up, all you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Amen. You see it? Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up your, uh, lift up your everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Remember, we have a natural resistance, and that's what the enemy wants us to do, resist God and open up to whatever other junk's out there. But look at the last part. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Think of that. The word selah means to dwell on that or to think of that. So we've been doing a series called The Truth About. And basically this one is designed to let you know we are visionaries. Every Christian has a form of vision. Amen? I like what the scripture says. Your young men shall see, I mean, your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. I want to make sure I get that right. So, good morning to you, saints of God. Welcome to today's briefing. Amen. One of the things that we need to understand in this lesson is God grant us the wisdom and the understanding of what the future holds us in God. Can you say amen? And that future is good when we walk with the Lord. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Notice I have green on. <laughs> I'm just joking. And leads us beside still waters. Do you know why the waters have to be still? Because the sheep have to have water that is not churned up. You get around rapid water. Have you ever been down the rapids? Any of them anywhere? It'll suck you under. And sheep have wool. So our shepherd leads us beside still waters. Still waters run deep. They're clear, easy to drink from. Can you say amen? <laughs> He's not going to lead us to a waterfall and boot us over the top of it. Like sometimes people think. How many know that every good gift, every perfect gift comes from who? Amen. If it's not good and perfect, then something else is working. Can you say amen? All right. What would it be like? I'm just kind of think about this for a minute. What would it be like if we couldn't see? We wouldn't know where to step. If for some reason we shut off all the lights in this room, blindfolded you, and somebody yelled fire, how would you get out? You would have to feel where things are so you don't trip or hurt yourself. Can you say amen? And this is who we were when we were in our sin. We were walking in a darkness whereby we thought good was evil and evil was good. How about partial vision? Let's say you were born with weak eyes. I mean, not to fault anybody. People get born under certain things because of Adam's sin, not because of something you do. So let's say you were born with weak eyes. Then you need what to enhance your vision? Glasses. Let Jesus be your glasses to see your future and where you're stepping. Can you say amen? Not only that, but vision, seeing, shows us colors. We get to see depth. Hello. And not only that, but... <clears throat> we can see warning signs how far off. And so it's important to have vision. Can you say amen? And so our lesson is we are visionaries. Where are we going, Pastor Kerry? What are we doing? Where are we going? What are we doing? Well, where we're going is fulfilling our vision. And you haven't got a chance to read it, read it. 
Find out what our goals are, what our vision is. Find out what our commission and what our mission is. Find out what our statement of faith. This is what we're living up to. This is what God gave us. He told us that we would be a training center. We would be a sanctuary place where people who are broken can come and find healing. People that are lost can come and find Jesus. Can you say amen? And where the truth is being preached, so the eyes of our understanding become enlightened. So we understand the difference between religious stuff, religious teaching, and really scriptural teaching, developing a sure walk in Christ. Amen. And God has given us some awesome truths. And at times they sound, oh, pastor, meeting with God every morning, faithfully. Absolutely. And you'll find out your whole Christianity will take on far more meaning to you. And you'll come into a more confidence, more stability when you do that very thing. Can you say amen? A couple of points I want to give you. Number one, having vision means God's revealing things to do and steps to take. God empowers us to see and do what he shows us. Vision can be very practical and can be very common sense. Amen. Somebody looks and says, oh, we need this. And so God gives them a, a vision, some insight, some passion in that area. This is what I'm believing God for to do. That we have plenty of people, we have lots of new people now, who I want to give them a chance to be some, do something within the church. Not overdo. Uh, listen, you have your own life at home, but Jesus should be a part of that life. So you have a home life, you have a church life, you have a work life. All that has to have Jesus to the center. Can you say amen? All right, second point I want to give you, it's, if it's really dark, we need to see, right? And the entrance of God's word gives us light. A light can open our vision so we can see our path. You ever been camping? <laughs> Thirdly, God is light. Amen? And in him is no darkness at all. Not only that, but he is perfect. Say, God is perfect. Concerning you, he's absolutely perfect. He doesn't make a mistake. He's right there when you need him. The key is we need to begin to realize that. Say amen, somebody. All right. So he gives light through his word and envisions us on what to do and how to do it. So we need vision. Can you say amen? <clears throat> I got a sip of water here. Fourthly, we are visionaries at heart. We can look at a situation and by the help of the Holy Spirit, know how to put it together. With God, wisdom, with God's wisdom, he'll show you what steps to take in your daily walk. He'll show you where to park when you have to go to the doctor. He'll show you what to do if we depend on him, if we encourage him and engage him in our life. You are visionaries. Can you say amen? Now, a church like this, <clears throat> because we've gone through so much, there's some things that we need. And I'm praying God will bring visionaries in to put those things together and see if they function properly. Say amen. And then fifthly, God's wisdom asks five questions. Now, please, if you can, write these down. Every project, every vision, everything that's done in your home life, in church life, even on the job, these five questions should be asked before doing anything because you're visionaries. Say amen. Well, what are they? Okay, let's go through them. What needs to be done? Look at the situation. This needs to actually be done. Two, who will do it? How many people will it involve? Three, what steps do we take to get that done? Four, what will it cost, if anything? Time, money, and five, 
Will it praise God after it's accomplished? If you're building a Sunday school, what do it needs to be done? Sunday school. Um, who will do it? What steps need to be taken? Host and hostess is something that we really want to uh, get going. So we always have goodies at the front there. And people feel welcome when they come in, want to come hopefully come in in a, in a coffee uh, type atmosphere and sit down and enjoy a cup of coffee and maybe a goodie before service, got themselves prayed up and ready. You know, you see, there's a lot of things that we need here. You know, you look at this and there's a lot of Christmas decorations. Well, it's after Christmas, so guess what? A visionary will say, well, okay, we can get this put down. You know, we can, we can do this. Everyone say amen. Sounds like you're looking for volunteers. No. <laughs> I'm looking for people who have the passion of God. They want to really get involved. Can you say amen? So God's wisdom asks those five questions. Do you remember the five? I hope you wrote them down. <laughs> All right. A couple of things. Our text is, if you'll go to Joel chapter 2. It's a, a little prophet there in the Old Testament. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. And it says, this is a, actually, this is a prophecy over the coming, the dying, the resurrection, the end times, and the finishing of God's will in earth, this prophecy. But there's a section of it deals with the pouring out of the Spirit, so we're going to deal with that. Verses uh, 29, or 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward, after the Holy Spirit came, after Pentecost, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. How much? Interesting. I'll explain that sometime you come to some Holy Spirit workshops. All, all people have the Holy Spirit right up to their face. But it's only the ones that surrender next to Jesus and actually have God inside. But the Spirit's been poured out into the atmosphere and it's literally touching all outward flesh. It's kind of different that way, but it is. All right, so now, and as upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, must be me, your young men shall see visions, and also on my maid, manservants and on my maidservants I will pour out my spirit in those days. God's looking for people to be open up so God can direct them and fulfill your life. There's nothing greater than doing what God asks you to do and then filling you with the joy in doing it and the power to do it. Man, there's nothing like it. All right, my first point is having godly vision and goals. Say, Lord, give me godly vision and goals. You see, there are certain things that you have inside of you that you can do that no one else can. And if you have a passion for a certain type of ministry, Linda is my job, because we're the only elders right now, my job is to see that you get the training to do it and the backing to get to do it. Can you say amen? <coughs> so, having godly visions and goals. Proverbs 29, verse 18, in the King James Version. The newer version's kind of widen this out. So I'll try to give you both versions, but the King James Version, I like it the best because this is what it says. Where there is no vision, the people perish. He that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now, another translation says, where there is no open instruction, the people wander around without restraint. Jesus said it this way, they're like sheep without a shepherd. Hello, let us all return to the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. Can you say amen? Amen. All right, do you see that? Okay. Habakkuk 2, please. Verse 2. Some people call it Habakkuk. Some people call Habakkuk. You know, 
Sounds too like too much like tobacco. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Bless your heart. You guys are so wonderful. Now listen. Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2 verse 2. This is key. Let's say for example our sister Diana has a vision for food. She needs to write that vision down so the people that come and join and want to be a part of that have some instructions and a job description to follow. Just, I'm just doing a hypothetical. If Brian wants to be in charge, he feels the compassion of God to be in charge of, of different departments in the church. I'm not going to label him. I'm not going to limit you, brother. But, but, you know, he has to seek God and get that instruction and that wisdom. Can you say amen? But also in doing things in a church, you have to have the passion unto God and for that particular work. So that you don't lose your energy while you're involved. A lot of Christians burn out because they're doing it in their own strength, not praying up and let God infuse that strength, his strength, in their doing. Can you say amen? All right, so it says, Habakkuk, then the Lord answered me and he said, write the vision down. Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Hello, we have a printed up vision and commission in the back. Have you ever read it? Do you, in that particular vision, it tells you what our vision is, what God said about this ministry, where we're going, how our goals, our core values, uh, our doctrine of faith, all of that's in that three-leaf that three leaf binder. And that's a job for when new people come, they can read it all about where we're going, what we're doing. Can you say amen? I had somebody the other day say, what are we doing? Well, I hopefully you're becoming more like Jesus. Hopefully you are following the vision of the church you're involved in. And where are we going? Well, hopefully you're going to heaven. Can you say amen? And where are you going? You're walking with Jesus through this life. We're running the race that's set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Can you say amen? So without a vision, people wander around. So we have to have plain vision, plain instructions, job descriptions, within a certain amount of grace so that the people who want to be a part can join right in and read it and go with it. Can you say amen? All right, a couple of points I want to bring up. Number one, where people have no instruction, no job description, they just wander around. Have you ever had a job where the person failed to instruct you on what your responsibilities are? It's not fun. You have to discover it all on your own, and you're getting yelled at the whole time. That's called poor management. Amen. <laughs> Moving on to point two. We have job descriptions in every department of this church, and even though we don't have every department covered, per se, there's a job description for ushers, cameraman, video man, excuse me, that's cameraman, and audio, and greeters and hostesses if you need some kind of instructions on what to do. Hello? Instead of somebody saying, I want you to do this, and then they don't bother to tell you what is involved in doing it. Hello? How many know God's a little better organized? All right, so we have job descriptions for every type of ministry right here at CCM. Knowing how and what to do builds confidence in our doing. <clears throat> Three, we seek God for his wisdom to organize and put in order and make the thing operate correctly. Can you say amen? And then fourthly, there is always plenty of room for people to have vision insight and feel the passion of the Lord in an area of ministry, especially here. We're still small yet. My next point is eyes to see and God in us for answers. Do you have eyes to see what needs to be done? 
because you have God on the inside of you that will give you the answers on how to do it. Amen. And you see, there's no stress in that. There's no mess. I like to say this. No mess because there's no stress. Can you say amen? We're the ones that often add stress into things by overthinking, moving right along. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. I'm going to read it to you rather quickly. Actually, it's 9, through, uh, 9 and 10. I don't know why I got the extra 12 in there, but that's okay. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. What? Okay, is it? All right. This is, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that love him. This is a quote from the Old Testament. Remember, God had not died and rose again. Jesus hadn't. So man did not have God in them. They had God involved with them. God working with them in a situation, but not God in them. Okay? So do you get it? All right, you got it. Then verse 10 says, but God has revealed them unto us through his spirit. For the Spirit, capital S, searcheth all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what things knows the things of a man except little s, the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. See, there has to be a marriage, and that's what happened when you got born again. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world... But the Spirit, capital S, which is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. You see, sometimes we're so distracted by looking outwardly, we miss what we have inwardly, sitting with God, having him reveal the goodies that we have inside of us. Hello? Hello? Every once in a while, one of those goodies will pop out, pop out, and you'll simply amaze yourself, and you'll go, wow, that's pretty cool. Remember, give always God glory, because he's the one that does it cool. Amen. Are you still with me? Okay. So, so that we might know the things which have been freely given to us by God. A couple of points here. I'm almost done. God lives in our spirit and knows what what's needed every time and will give the wisdom and the steps on how to do it and how to get her done if you will depend and lean on him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now that you got that, let's move on. Okay. Two, that's all right. Hey, one time the snow was so bad it just ripped all that place off. But we're not going to talk about that in the sermon. Okay. Two, if God reveals to you what he wants done, he will give you the wisdom to do it. The vision on how to get it done. Amen. We need such. We need to be led and taught what steps to take. Lord, give us wisdom on the projects that we do. And then thirdly, if he tells you the church needs such and such, obey him. Okay? First of all, he's not going to tell you to do something you can't do. He's going to tell you to do something you can do, but you're not sure if you should. I'll throw that in there. Amen. I always like to use finances for that. God tells you to write a check for $1,000. There's always a great reward in something like that. But you've got to be in the condition of really hearing from God. Can you say amen? Yeah. No rubber checks. They keep a bouncing back to you. No, anyway. No. All right. So three again. If he tells you the church needs this and, he, and this family needs that, Pray about it. Ask God, what do you, is there something, reason you want me to do in this? Ask God for his wisdom and his steps, you know. He will show you what he wants for you if you're going to be involved. Amen. And will empower you 
with wisdom to be able to do it. Two more scriptures and we're done. <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> All right, Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. Being as the Lord building this house, Psalms 127, except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. Amen. So he says, and I'm building up a spiritual house with lively stones. Hi, lively stones. <laughs> Amen. Jesus being the chief corner to offer up spiritual sacrifices. That's what a church is for. Training, gathering, and offering sacrifices of praise. Can you say amen? Of course, I'm sure there's a few things I might have left out on that simplicity there. All right, so listen to what this says. Through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and plenteous riches. Wow. Now, who's this coming from? Solomon. <laughs> now, I moved it into the Living Bible because I like this translation of the very same scripture. Listen to it put this way. Any enterprise, any ministry, any job, any project he went done at home, any enterprise is built by wise planning. Everyone say wise planning. Wise. Yeah, man. Okay. Becomes strong through common sense. Hello? It's common sense. You don't drive your car on empty very long. Hello? Common sense. You don't write a check when there's no money in the bank. I'm just throwing out some silly common senses, okay? Are you still with me? And profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. Do you know what the facts are? Are you in communication? What needs to be done? Who will do it? What steps will we take? Hello, how much will it cost? And when will it get done? And will it praise God? Can you say amen? So listen to this. couple points and we're done. What do you see for next year? I want you to join with me in prayer. What do you see God leading us for next year? And that includes you coming in, you know, I mean, you guys are part of this too. All right. And you say, well, Pastor Kerry, what are you doing? Well, Linda and I made a decision with God's direction to have a place where people come and hear about God with no strings attached. We have no big overhead. We don't have any large debts that we have to obligate you to help us pay. I won't do that to you. We either raise the money and get it, or we wait till the time we can. You see, there's a lot of wisdom, and that's why I always try to encourage you to sit down with me and say, where are we going? How do we handle this situation? Because it's nice to know, because I'd like for you, as you grow in the Lord, you're going to be in positions of authority, you're going to be doing some things, and you'll need to know how everything functions within this local body, so, and how it works, so that we work along on the same page together. Say amen. <clears throat> All right. Sorry about that coughing. What do you see for next year? In your life. What do you see for your life? How about in your church? God will guide your steps if you seek him. Seek and you shall. There you go. Amen. Two. What part do you play? in this church. If any, find out what it is. Talk to Linda and I. We'll see that you can get into that area. Now, we're in transition because of this weird year. Definitely been the weirdest year I've ever been through. But we're in transition. A lot of things are, are being done, but it's a long time in getting them done because of the snow and the COVID and all that. But great things are happening. So you want to take a little time and say, where are we going? What are we going to be doing? Because I'm all fired up. I'm excited. You know, so God's got some great things. Amen. Isaiah 35 is one of the things he told us that our property will be like Isaiah 35. 
where people who, who are having a hard time in their life will find Christ here. So read it sometime on your own, okay? Thirdly, okay, what part do you play? What goals do you have? How about your gifts? What are some of your gifts? Your abilities? What is your passion in ministry? This is where we're headed here. Amen? Can you say amen? And thirdly, we seek God. We ask for his wisdom to help in a time of need. Amen. So therefore, we need to pray, then obey what he tells us. God wants us all in some way to be involved in some form of ministry. Some of us are older, so maybe there's a way that you, you can get involved in ministry at your age. You know, it's not everybody can run around the neighborhood and witness for Christ. Although we are looking for some evangelistic outreaches. Amen. So question. I want you to think about it this week. What are we doing? So if you come and you look at this church and you say, well, Pastor Kerry, you're failing because this church needs to be giant and big. That's how you know you're a success. That's not God, what God told me. I already had a giant and big church. It's a mess. Things, it's too much work. You've got to have people that are faithful and loyal. But I told God I'd best obey whatever he wants. And he says, I want you to have a place where people, no matter how broken, can come and hear the truth, hear the word, and you can pray for them, and I'll take care of their needs and take it from there. And so we're not in competition to be like the other church up the road or down the road or have so many people or not, because that's distractions. If God wants to bring us a thousand people, fine. Yay! But if God wants to keep us at a hundred, yay! Keeps me out of the realm of wondering and messing things up. Amen. And God's a master builder. He's fantastic. So when the numbers come, the help will come. The finances come. That is where we're going. We're going to try to reach as many people in our local area as we can. Touching lives, giving answers, and sharing the word. If you got something out of that today, will you give the Lord a praise? Amen. All right, we're going to.